Hi, I'm Carrie. Today I'm going to be reviewing Bewilderment by Richard Powers. This actually got shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year, but I don't think it won. But it's not all about that. So I'm just going to give you some background about the book, then I'm going to talk about the themes, and then at the end I will let you know whether I recommend the book. Overall, this is a story about the relationship between a father and son, and it's set in the dystopian near future. So basically the earth is kind of dying, there's the climate crisis, species are going extinct, you know, all those things that we expect to happen in the near future. Actually most of those things are already happening, so yeah. <laughs> the father is called Theo, and he is an astrobiologist who is recently single. And Theo has produced this telescope that allows him to look up really close at different planets and he can work out whether there are life forms on those planets. But he has a lot of dramas with funding and the government and the various barriers that there are with getting this new technology over the line. Then we have the nine-year-old son, Robin, who is a interesting but rather difficult young man. He has been having a few issues at school with his emotions kind of getting out of control. But overall, he's a super positive little dude with big dreams. Anyway, the school ends up putting a whole lot of pressure on Theo to basically sort out Robin's behaviour because Robin hit another kid in the face with a thermos. Then Robin ends up in an experiment at the university where this kind of new mind technology is used to help him regulate his behaviour and control his emotions. And while he's involved in this mind control experiment thing, Robin ends up getting these big ideas about saving species from extinction and he decides he wants to get involved in activism. So the first issue that came up was around drug use and medicating children with learning disability. So this issue around you know, medicating children in schools um, is quite topical at the moment. Um, always draws a crowd, you know, creates a debate. Basically Theo is super against um, medicating Robin, naturally. Excuse the pun. I think, I think that's part of the reason why Theo decides to let Robin be a part of this experiment at the university because it's like an alternative option. And also the school has taken a bit of a hard line so there's a lot of pressure there and you know, Theo is just trying to do his best but he's stressed. Second issue is around loss. We learn very early on in the novel that Theo's wife, Robin's mother, um, died very tragically in an accident. So Theo and Robin are basically trying to keep her alive, keep her memory her memory alive um, as best they can. Also Theo obviously has full responsibility for Robin now so he's kind of trying to navigate that. Hashtag single dad but probably not ready to mingle. Then the third big issue is probably the state of the world and the environment and where that's all headed. Diseases, extinction, the climate crisis etc. Then in relation to that there are all the barriers around getting any positive action from the government and then how the government kind of refuses to accept that there are issues where if you don't admit there's a problem then there might not be one. Then the fourth kind of issue is all around going viral on the internet because Robin low-key, high-key gets kind of famous at one point. Theo's a bit stressed about it because there's the potential for Robin to get bullied but then there's also huge upside potential where Robin gets this massive platform and suddenly has this huge voice. But yeah, Robin loves it. He is a natural influencer. Uh, but once again, Theo's had to make the tough decision about what's best for Robin. So I'm imagining Theo to be pretty grey or just completely bored by the end of all of this. He's been through a lot. And then finally, the fifth issue is more around the father-son relationship. Theo will pretty much go to the end of the earth for Robin and he goes particularly out of his way to help Robin when Robin's having his emotional breakdowns. They go on camping trips and they imagine going to a whole new worlds together to try and calm Robin down. It's pretty cute, but like high stress. Anyway, basically it seems like most of Theo's existence is spent trying to navigate the myriad of obstacles surrounding Robin's existence. So would I recommend the book? Uh, not sure to be honest. It has a really cynical outlook on the world in the future, um, which maybe we don't really need at the moment. But then again, it is literally a dystopian book. That's the genre, so it's supposed to be like that. That was a stupid thing to say. To be clear, I do think it's a good book. In my opinion, it's really well written and it definitely got me 
thinking quite deeply at times. Um, you know, when you're reading a book and you look up and go, oh, well, that happened. It moved me. No, it bewildered me. I'm just not really sure who I would recommend it to. It sort of reminds me of the kind of book that you study at school. And I mean that as a compliment, um, as opposed to, wouldn't bother reading it unless I was being tested on it. I, I did read it and I'm not being tested on it. But we did do a dystopian module at school many, many years ago. And I can see this fitting into the lineup pretty well. But yeah, this person liked it. It changed how I thought about the earth and our place in it. It changed how I see things. And that's always for me a mark of a book worth reading. Barack Obama. Oh, you heard the man. I recommend it too. No, it is, it is a, it is a good book. It's dark, it's dark. It's not a cozy read, but it's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. Anyway, that's it, really. Any thoughts, tell me. Anyway, bye.